everybody. Um, sorry for the delay. We were having some technical difficulties, but um, I want to welcome you to the second diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility webinar um, in this series. So today we are going to have a presentation from Wilfredo de Jesus Rojas about community engagement in translational research. research. And I just wanted to tell you a few things about the webinar uh, series. So the RDCRN Diversity Committee is hosting a webinar series on topics related to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in rare disease. Presenters will include leaders in patient advocacy, clinical care, and research. And the webinars will be recorded and stored on the RDCRN YouTube channel. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Please stay on mute throughout the presentation. Um, there will be a Q&A at the end and you can use the chat or the raise hand function. Um, there will be a post webinar survey. So please, um, if you can take a few minutes to fill that out, that would be great. Um, and this webinar is being recorded and that recording will be made available um, after the webinar. Um, so now oh, I am- So I can take it from here. Oh, oh, great. Hi, Della. glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, sorry about the little glitch. Um, on my uh, platform. I'm um, Edward Zega uh, from the University of Miami. I come to this group from the PDI uh, uh, TC, and uh, I, uh, my interest is in uh, a transplant for sickle cell disease. Today we have Wilfredo de Jesus Rojas uh, as our webinar speaker today. He's from um, the uh, University of Ponce Health Sciences in uh, Puerto Rico. Um, Dr. Rojas has a very interesting journey uh, right now um, as a scientist, physician scientist in rare diseases. He began his training in Puerto Rico, went to uh, Texas, did his fellowship, and now um, has um, he leads the Pediatric Rare Lung Diseases and Asthma Institute in Puerto Rico. His interest uh, research uh, uh, in um, rare lung diseases in children like primary cellular dyskinesia, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiotaxia, and the hemantipulac syndrome. Um, he will talk to us about his experience with developing a program for a rare disease research, recruitment, and how he engages with the community. Quite an interesting um, uh, story. Uh, with this, I will um, hand over the platform to uh, Dr. Rojas, and please join me in welcoming him. Thank you. Thank you so much for this introduction. I'm very glad and happy and proud to be here. And I see a lot of many faces um, that I had been working uh, in the past together. Um, a lot of people that I really appreciate and have helped me during this career. Um, and today um, I will share my slides because I have some slides that I wanna share. Um, there you go. Are you seeing my slides, right? Yep, looks great. Perfect, okay. So today um, I will be talking a little bit about my experience during these past years in Puerto Rico, talk, um, working with rare diseases, specifically um, three diseases that I really um, enjoy working with uh, are um, primary cellular dyskinesia, uh, hermaskipulex syndrome, and hereditary hemorrhagic teringitis. But in this uh, conference, I will be talking more about how I involve the community, how I try to get um, everyone engaged in order to help the team and try to move forward research in an island where we have limitations, right? So let's start. So I have a couple of slides at the end. Um, everyone is welcome to, to ask questions and just write it down. Perfect. So. In order to be success in community engagement, um, we should address different important topics. First, I think that that include meeting with stakeholders, community outreach, development of webinars, and do some cross-site activities. But also it's important to be an advocate, um, to explore ways or different ways we can develop policies to change our community. And in that 360 degrees um, project, that's what, I, that's what I do usually every day. 
Well, my first experience with community engagement was back to 2018, when I decided to put a group of interested people, patients and caretakers um, together to work together, uh, working with a rare condition called primary cellulitis dyskinesia, which is characterized by chronic pulmonary infections and sinusitis. So when I came to Puerto Rico, I started my clinic and I saw that there is a lot of people that have been diagnosed with asthma that really doesn't fit with the diagnosis of asthma. So I started to look for rare diseases and I found patients that were having um, that diagnosis of primary cystic dyskinesia that were not diagnosed before. So with them, we meet every three months uh, by Zoom meetings and we have been learned a lot about ECD um, in Puerto Rico since then. Later, we started a study um, um, with another rare disease called hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias, and we developed a clinic for patients with this rare condition too. Um, at the same time, we created a clinical rotation for medical students um, from the University of Puerto Rico, um, just not to learn about the disease, also to take care of patients with HHT, and also to be an advocate of, for HHT patients. Um, it's important to know that patients with HHT usually have chronic nasal bleeding and also develop like long pulmonary malformations. So DCD, if it's not identified early enough, could be lethal. Also, we, the help of the HVS network in the United States, we were able to have meetings with patients and with another rare disease called hermansky pudlak syndrome. And patients with the hermansky pudlak syndrome usually have albinism and vision problems. During their adulthood, they may develop pulmonary fibrosis in some cases. So I was able at the same year to join the HPS clinic. That is a clinic that we do in Puerto Rico every three months in the community. With, um, we put together a group of nurses, psychologists, dermatologists, hematologists um, from the adult and pediatric sites, including pulmonologists like me. Um, but also we involve medical students uh, to provide services to this population. And, and that helped us to get interest from her diseases since, since they are in medical school. And those students will probably um, become the leaders of her diseases in the future. Um, in, the, in the community, I had been working with as an invited speaker, in this case was for the American Association of Advancement of Science or AAAS, Caribbean Division. And I was able to participate in this conference. And I had the pleasure to meet with many scientists who are uh, collaborators with research with me today. And, and I found that networking and the partnership with other scientists working in different fields are vital to study heart diseases because then you can really create um, research questions that you're not thinking before. But we should not forget that our hospital is part of our community. And the inclusion of the staff to know about her diseases is important. So nurses, nurse practitioners, and respiratory therapists can help us to identify patients with her diseases if we teach them how to um, how to think about it. and also to promote research uh, in, the, in, the, in the hospital. Teaching them about research and in her diseases is important too because sometimes many patients come to my clinic because they, um, because they, wanna, they, they wanna know more about the research that we're doing. They, want, they were oriented about our publications and by the nursing staff that uh, was taking care to them during the hospitalization or during a hospital visit. Um, at the same time, it's very important that uh, we collaborate not only with the local scientists, but also collaboration with leaders, in my case in pediatrics from the American Academy of Pediatrics, had been critical to identify fundings to study uh, rare diseases in Puerto Rico too. But that is not enough. Sometimes we have to motivate people since high school. 
to get involved in research and show empathy to people with her diseases. In this case, we were talking about vaping and rare lung diseases with a group of high school students in the capital of Puerto Rico in San Juan. And also we must inspire our children's imagination as a future scientist in her diseases. Um, as a pediatrician, I'm amused about the curiosity of children's mind that doesn't have limits to enrich our research possibilities in, com in the community. We prepare talks uh, about different topics, including rare diseases, to improve knowledge on all levels, from little kids to adults. And as everyone know, the, during the COVID pandemic, we implemented online education about rare diseases and research overall. In this Facebook Live, we spoke about HHT and barriers associated with diagnosis and medical care in Puerto Rico. We um, address patient concerns, implement the strategies to help them with feedback calls, and also we provide them with information about their concerns. Um, in this one specifically, we were talking about HHT patients, um, and they were able to um, ask questions online. We were able to clarify concepts um, during the pandemic, and also to provide orientation about the community resources that uh, are related to their disease, and most important, they let them know that they, during the pandemic, they, they are not alone. That's what's very important for them. Another experience I had was being invited to be part of an international webinar between Brazil and Puerto Rico. And this was for, this was for PCD. In this webinar, um, we were able to, we would like to um, address and understand patient common complaints in different countries and develop new research questions to explore in the future as part of the research. Um, during the webinar, the patient could also ask questions to the doctor. And at the end of the webinar, we were having a lot of new ideas to, that we had to write it down to explore and, and, and include in future studies uh, in terms in PC. Something interesting about this webinar is that uh, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese. I'm not a Portuguese uh, speaker, but we had a translation, a live translation. So that was like a, like a one uh, very interesting. And since then we have been uh, helping and doing more webinars uh, and the help and with the help and the initiative of medical and research students, we completed several webinars that had been taking place in our Facebook and social medias to teach people and, um, about different diseases like cystic fibrosis, rare immunodeficiencies, and PCD2. In one of the webinars, one of the parents, um, one of the mother of a patient, she, she didn't want to talk and we invited her and she was like the first time was like live in a, in a webinar and and she was like um very proud of the work we do because um the her disease that his son has nobody knows about it and now she shared the video to the doctors to everyone who asked about the disease that he, his son has also uh, we involve medical students uh, with our project and, and we motivate them to do on um, participate for 5Ks for people uh, and fundraisers to increase um, uh, money for her diseases. For example, in February 28th, her disease um, day, uh, we, most of the students that are to work with us, they participate in different fundings. Um, so, and the funding collected help nonprofit organizations that are in different um, places that help us to move the research going on. And this was another activity that was very interesting for us. Um, this was a strategy that we used to keep our community informed. And, and it's because in Puerto Rico, when I came, nobody really knew about PCD too much. Um, so, because of this lack of information about PCD as a rare disease, many doctors were un unaware about PCD. So we created a QR code card with a link for our patients. Um, and after scanning the QR code, the link provides viral information about the patient disease. For example, like pairs for doctors that should be 
considering during an evaluation of a patient with PCD in the emergency room, or, um, or, or information for, in general, for primary serious clinician in this case. In this way, we can educate our community and empower patients with information about their diseases. And after implementing this PCD card, patients feel more comfortable going to the, the, their visit, the doctor visit, or the, the emergency room. It was an idea because HPS also have a card, so we use the same strategy for another disease. So uh, that was something that I really liked. It. Also, with the help of other nonprofit organizations uh, for her diseases on the island, we promoted the Her Disease Week in Puerto Rico. And, and, and that was to create awareness about her diseases and be an advocate for our patients. And this gave us the power to keep fighting for rights for our patients uh, with her diseases. Um, now, there is a recognition of uh, her disease communities and their necessities in the government. We also reviewed the current government policies for patients with rare diseases, and we were able to include them into the catastrophic coverage that will have them um, provide more additional uh, access to healthcare and also for subspecialties that they need. Um, so now they have free access for healthcare and their subspecialty that in, in the case they need it. We outreach the local news to be advocates for our patients with heart diseases and to promote new strategies to improve the diagnosis and treatment of our patients. Um, in this picture, we were talking about HHT and its increased prevalence on the island. So also we spoke um, in the news about our research findings too. And thanks to um, our interventions, um, patients with PCD, for example, are already covered by the government issue, the insurance um, as a rare catastrophic disease, um, and that provides them free access to medicines and specialty healthcare. So we use the power of knowledge to provide pediatric residents in Puerto Rico and with new tools for adequate characterization of rare diseases and understanding patient needs. So empowering our medical residents to know about her diseases is one of our goals. But also it's equally important. We teach them to be empathic medical providers with the patients and specifically with her diseases and their caretakers. And we don't not only teach them to recognize the disease, we, but some of them get involved further and develop community projects that eventually are presented at local and international conferences. And, and most of them publish their results in peer review art uh, papers and journals. So we motivate medical students to read about her diseases, to formulate research questions um, that could be studied, published, and presented. Um, in this picture from, is from the last year at the American Thoracic Society that we, our team presented nine poster from Puerto Rico um, related to her diseases. And for PCD, we have a social platform and a nonprofit organization with the mission to improve the quality of life of patients with a primary serious kinesia on the island through education, research, and support for a person through, through their life. So as a medical doctor and a translational researcher, uh, understanding a rare disease uh, should involve more than basic science. Um, sometimes we have to go from basic science, go away to public health. Um, and that sense, community involvement is vital to develop a meaningful questions that could be benefit the impact group, group of people. Uh, in my experience with PCD, um, we succeed because we listen to our patients, we address their concern, and we implement changes with a common goal a better quality of life, um, and also a better quality of health. So we, the providers, should be the physicians, the scientists, the educators, the advocates for our patients. From developing a nonprofit organization to academics, creating a specialized clinics for our patients, uh, creating also um, public health policies, 
we have the power to empower our communities and motivate patients to be part of our ongoing research and help us to develop future scientific questions to address. This is the only way together we can achieve a major translational impact in our community. So finally, and to get time to for, for the questions, um, I had been busy writing and publishing our findings in the last few years, but my greatest satisfaction is when, when I look back into my community, when I see the changes our work has done, the structure of a successful community engagement may be hard, may be hard to, achieve, to be achieved, um, but when established, the participation empower themselves, fight for their rights and move science forward together. As I read once and I share daily with my patients with her diseases in my clinic, um, along we're rare, but together we're strong. So thanks for this opportunity to share my experience with you. And I hope my journey working with communities and rare diseases in Puerto Rico inspires, inspires other diseases the same way we are. I'm glad to um, answer any questions you have. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Rojas, uh, for sharing your experience. Um, I, I will just ask one question before um, anyone else. This might be a challenge um, beginning from the grassroots to identify um, and build a program the way you have done. And uh, I can imagine that um, at the onset, the reception uh, um, for your ideas uh, my, my, must have not been easily you know, received. How were you able to navigate those challenges to get to where you are now? Yeah, that's something that happened. I mean, when you see a young faculty with all these ideas and people probably in Puerto Rico like, have been working for 30 years and I asked them, how you, why, why you should not do, why should, why you should not do these or why should we do don't the other thing, right? So, and I said, well, it's because it's difficult. And I, I always heard like, it's very difficult to do it. I see that uh, the people probably doesn't have the motivation, I guess. Um, but I think that when you talk with the right people at, this, at the right time, everything like fit together. Um, uh, I don't think that it's like a magic, thing that I can tell you to, to do it, but it's hard work, I guess. Um, and try to look for funding in different places. Um, also have a lot of students that work with me. Um, also um, have been working with different mentors that have the same ideas um, that, that empower me to empower others. Um, and I think that that combination of things is like, the what what make you a success program engaging engaging uh, research in the community uh, that's interesting because uh, that is one of the uh, goals for uh, this webinar series mm -hmm. is to be able to have people like you um, share your experiences and then we also be able to um, network help us to you know identify uh, colleagues or collaborators across uh, different spectrums and then um, and get involved. Uh, thank you. Um, any other question? There's one question in the chat. Let's see here uh, from. Okay, I don't think it's a question. Yeah, I think it's like a comment from um, Elizabeth Gonzalez that looks like they started a program or a group for students interested in her diseases and they wanted to see if we can collaborate. For sure, we will be able to follow at any time. Okay, good. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, can you share some of your, um, you know, uh, the work you've done with uh, some of the patients? Uh, um, how many patients you have with BCD? How many have you had with Masiputlak? And uh, how have there has management for these patients been yeah, transformed, sure. you know, from your work? Yeah. Yeah. So um, at this point, um, during the last three years, we have been implementing different tools that uh, to improve the diagnostics um, for rare diseases. First, we started doing genetics. Then we started doing um, nasal biopsies. 
Then we started doing um, nitric oxide, for example, for PCD. And at that point, we were able to properly characterize patients over time. And we had been publishing our works. And at this point for PCD, we're close to 30 patients for, um, with the founder mutation that has been identified in Puerto Rico. And, and we, uh, with the help of uh, Michel Maniam and the PCD Foundation and the, the Tuchapiro and everyone there, we were able to establish a PCD center on the island. Um, and now we're a referral center for the island, but also some we, we get some uh, calls from, for example, Dominican Republic, um, Colombia, Mexico, um, that, that they wanted to see how we can help them to get diagnosed. In terms of her mask left. So when I came to Puerto Rico, there was already a group working with her mask So I, I, I joined that group. Um, in that group, uh, we are following um, around um, 300 patients with HPS, both adults and pediatrics. Um, and we have a clinic that we do in, in the west side of the island. Some of the patients also visit, yeah, some of the patients visit um, our center, um, our clinics um, for her diseases. And, and for them, we have a clinic for, uh, that we can do pulmonary function tests, we can do genetic testing, we can provide basic education immunizations um, for, for HPS2, and, and we also do um, a research uh, and we present those at the different conferences, including the, uh, um, the ATS, the American Traffic Society. Uh, in terms of HHT, so HHT is the patient that they have a lot of bleeding. So we had been working with different hematologies on the island to get more um, awareness about the DC. And in that DC, we are able to do genetics for for them and a screening for pulmonary arteriovenous malformations. So um, we monitor them if they have any hypoxemia, any uh, issues like shortness of breath. Um, and the most important thing is, is get diagnosed, right? Because as soon as you have the diagnosis, you feel like you fit with that group and you are part of a group with her diseases or a specific group like HPS, PCD, or HHT, and you can have a support group. And that support group helps you to understand the DC, to follow the guidelines for that DC, and to get evaluated. And as soon as you have that, you feel like less stress because you know people from the same group that are having the same issues you have, less or more. So, and you feel empowered that you can take care of your DC. You know, I think that this is the magic of the social support groups and the, um, um, the, the issue that we can help them as a provider to guide the group with the research and the last information that we may have about that DC that makes the difference because they feel like they're not going into a chip alone. They have a captain or a person that guide that trip through the journey of life. I can hear you. Thank you. I was on mute. There's one question. Um, any advice on how to measure results? Yeah, well, in, in terms of um, one of the things that we're implementing with different groups here um, is the registry, right? We have to create the registries and that registries um, that should be um, HIPAA compliance and also through an IRB process that is secure. Everyone put their, their, their um, their tests, their results, and everything is in one database. And that database you can uh, study retrospectively in order to get your findings and try to get more information. And, and that's the way it is. In terms of engagement in the community, uh, well, in, if you have like, for example, social media, social media have a lot of data because for example, I know that 
our PCD uh, social media web Facebook page, for example, it have a lot of engagements or it have likes, it have shares, it have a lot of um, people from other countries. So you can create a map about what is what what is the people like reading about you or reading about your 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 group and and you can have an idea of what is your you know your how how much you reach around the world that's another idea a very different one but the scientific ones is to create registries to study prospectively or retrospectively the data that you are acquiring any other question? Well, I mean, if there are no other questions, I will uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rojas, for joining us today. And uh, um, thank you all also for logging on, um, taking time to join our webinar. We will be in touch with you regarding the next series of webinars. And uh, I wish you all the happy holidays from um, my co-chairs and, uh, and our project manager, uh, Sheridan. Thank you all.